this whole tactic obsession, you know, has to go away first off, because it's not serving the customers and it's also going to be a tough way for you to run a business, but, but, bringing a strategic framework that that not only differentiates you, but is going to actually deliver tremendous value is really how you're going to stand out today. Hello, and welcome to the Online Business Expert Series. I am Pamela Wilson, and I'm here with John Jantz. I first met John during the years that I was working at Copyblogger, and we have stayed in touch over the years. I've appeared on the pages of the Duct Tape Marketing blog, I'm honored to say, and I also had the opportunity to address John's audience in one of his live training events. So we've known each other for years, and I am thrilled that he is here. I've got lots of great, juicy questions based on his most recent book, which you can see right over there. Um, and other, I think it's going to be kind of a wide-ranging interview. So welcome, John. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Pamela. I think actually you missed one. I think you were on my podcast at least once. Uh, oh, also. I was on your podcast a couple of times. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah. John is, I mean, he is a really skilled content marketer, so you can find him all over. And you have how many how many posts on your blog? It's Oh, it's a over 4,000. It's um. a lot. It's amazing. That's amazing, yeah. amazing consistency. So um, the first thing I want to ask you about, and I'm looking down at my notes because I want to make sure I say this right. You wrote an article on that blog, one of the 4,000 articles, <laughs> but this one really jumped out at me. The title was, Is Facebook Still a Useful Play for Small Businesses? And one of the things that you said in that article is, um, that this may be a time to revisit our dependence on social media. And I would love to get your take on that. I think it's going to feed into some of the things we'll talk sure. about later in the interview as well. Well, I think for many businesses, there's no question that some of these social platforms are a necessary part of marketing today. Uh, but but I guess in some ways, the, the sort of subtext to that you know, headline could be, is it a useful play the way people are using it? <laughs> Um, because I think the the days of just you know repurposing content or taking everything you've written and and you know link and putting it there in in Facebook you know it's just not going to get any organic engagement you know whatsoever. So in in a lot of businesses that's pretty much all they do on their Facebook pages, and so they it has little to no value uh, for them. Now. I, you know, I have a couple of small business clients that have amazing engagement, but they've just really been very effective at posting what's going on. You know, the culture posts, as I call them. Um, you know, the the more personalized stuff, and and you know, great pictures, funny things. You know, that that type of you're basically just demonstrating who you are kind of. You know, there's no call to action in it, or you know, or anything. It's really just making people feel like, yeah. Uh, I get them. I like them, you know, and I think that that's a, a lot of the use. Now, the the page use, of course, is you know is is extremely valuable for folks. It's probably getting you know a few years ago it was the wild wild west still, and it was people were you know printing money you know <laughs> using Facebook ads, and and that's gotten a lot harder. People have gotten um, kind of numb to you know some of the approaches there, but. Uh, for example, we've had a very, I have a very effective campaign lead, uh, uh, Facebook lead campaign going for a remodeling contractor that is having trouble hiring people. Um, and it turns out that that's actually been uh, the greatest ROI, you know, uh, imaginable <laughs> using that very specific tool. Whether it's Facebook or some other platform, you know, my real advice to a lot of small businesses is, you know, find the one you think has the most value for you and just go deep in that and and forget about the rest because you can't you you can't do them all um not not well at least and so you're just wasting your time if you try i love that and one of the things i i actually wrote down a quote from the article that i thought was so great you said that facebook can have a place for small businesses but not one that comes before creating a better customer experience discovering how to grow and scale with existing customers and finding ways to generate referrals which i know is you know that you are beating the drum of referrals and have been for many years um, and but this was the line that jumped out at me. For most of the folks that we work with, social media in general is a lazy and misleadingly costly way to market. 
So speak to that for just a moment before we move into cu customer experience. I, I, I must have been feeling particularly cynical that day or something that uh, <laughs> it, just, you know, thinking that, oh, Facebook's free or, you know, LinkedIn's free and I can just post and, you know, spam anything I want there and have, you know, put my links there and my promotions there because it doesn't cost anything. Well, I think that what happens is it usually doesn't return much. And so the cost really is is not just the time, but I think it's maybe the cost to um, to really connecting or building trust that that comes from having you know real valuable engagement. And that's where I think you know that's what I mean, a, a true thing that you can attach cost to it is Facebook looks at that and says, oh, you you have 10,000 followers, but none of them read your stuff. So we're just not going to show it to anybody. <laughs> and so, you know, all of a sudden that's a, that's a sort of a tangible cost that you can attribute to, you know, that type of participation in social media. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I do think you know, we need to be looking at what we're doing and making sure that we're measuring results to sure. make sure that the time and effort that we pour into it is actually paying off. So, but one of the things that you talk about is customer experience versus customer service. And that jumped out as at me as well. And I'm wondering for online business owners, how can they approach those two concepts? Well, I think that um, for me, when I'm talking about customer service, um, I'm talking about more the uh, do what I have to do. I mean, if somebody complains or if somebody requests something, you know, I take care of, of the need. Um, and that's really, I think, how people view customer service. Now, customer experience really kind of comes with the caveat of saying, you know, how can I make every engagement better? How can I continue to look at uh, what we do and and find a way to do it uh, better? You know, so many so many businesses set up their process for how a transaction is done, how a customer gets fulfilled. You know, how you send them a bill. I mean, just pretty much everything we do in business. And and maybe don't look at it again for ten years. <laughs> um, and you know, the problem with that is that you know people aren't. People aren't going to come to you and say, you know, your experience could be a little better. <laughs> I mean, they're just going to find somewhere else to go. Um, and so, just by constantly looking at that, and and not just did we deliver what we promised, you know, how can we exceed people's expectations? You know, how can we surprise them? I mean, I, I just uh, I just think it's so simple. I mean, my my uh, uh, wife just ordered something or just got something from uh, uh, an Etsy seller. Um, and the the email you know that came it was delivered that day and they have a you know process saying hey your order's here but instead of just saying your order's here you know it starts with get ready get ready to rip open your surprise you know or something I mean I just think there's so many easy things you can do that just have people go oh nobody else does that <laughs> um, and that's that's what I'm really talking about just constantly looking at at ways to not just improve but to really to surprise people and and exceed their expectations well one of the things you mentioned the, in the book was this concept of tolo so yeah. instead of you only <laughs> live once it's they only live once so how does that end up impacting customer experience and how does it help us as the people who are delivering that customer experience yeah. to really dig deep into creating an experience that is memorable and special? Yeah, so so I probably better give some context to that. Um, that was not a creation by me. It's something that I borrowed and applied to this. But uh, when I was writing the book, I was listening to uh, one of my uh, favorite podcasts. It's Seth Godin's Akimbo, and uh, um, he has a um, an element of his show where people call in, leave messages, ask questions, and he plays a few of them at the end of the show. So uh, this was a comment from a. Uh, um, uh, high school teacher, I think he is in New York uh, um, named Howard. Um, and he called in and just said, Hey, you know, a lot of people use that, that term, you know, YOLO, like you only live once. And, you know, he kind of jokingly says, it's usually I, when I hear it, it's, you know, one of my students getting ready to do something stupid. So, so, so I, uh, I, I actually, you know, asked them to rethink that idea that, you know, I want you to imagine that um, you're going to go see a friend and, you know, unfortunately, that they are going to die soon, but they don't know it and you can't tell them. And what if you turned, you know, YOLO to TOLO? They only live once. And it seems like a rather dramatic thing to have in a marketing book, but um, it, it really does. I mean, everybody picks up on that. Every time I talk and use that phrase, people are like, I immediately felt a shift. 
Um, and I think that that's really kind of what I'm going for with that is that if we at least start, you know, realizing or remembering, I should say, uh, that, you know, we're just people selling to people <laughs> that, um, and we all want to get to live once, um, then, you know, may, maybe rather than some of the things we do being a chore, they're, they're a gift. Um, and that's, that's really the kind of the point of coming up with this sort of uh, sappy uh, way of kind of uh, reframing how we think about our interactions. Um, absolutely. And that's the thing. It, we are, we're, we're interacting as humans. I mean, it's, a, it's business. It's in a business context, but we're human beings interacting with each other. So right. if we can approach it with that, I, that changes everything. Um, and I thought it was a beautiful introduction to the next kind of, I think somewhat challenging concept. I kept reading this and thinking, oh, John's going there with this word. Okay, how's it going? <laughs> and it's this concept of membership, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I thought that was so important as well that you were sort of saying if you thought of your customers as members and you had to keep them excited about being a member of your customer team, how yeah. would you treat them? So can you speak a bit more about that? Yeah. And that's really what I was trying to get at is, is certainly not a Costco membership or a subscription model. I mean, those are, those are, you know, uh, useful uh, and valuable business models, but it was really more of a point of view about how we view the relationship and 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 how the customer views the relationship as as well. Um, you know, I think when somebody considers themselves a customer, you know, they 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 go out and research a company and they agree to you know transact business with them. But but when we um, when we join an organization, something particularly something that we believe in or that we you know mutually benefit from, you know, I think we we tend to um, you know to to, uh, see that as, as um, you know, investing in ourselves, and uh, you know, as as in, and it's going to be something we're going to really evangelize, you know, rather than just maybe even refer. So it, it is a challenging concept. But what I hope to do and and did and accomplish in the book is that, is to make it practical, uh, is because I don't think anybody says, yeah, that's a dumb idea. They're just like, how do I do it? <laughs> And so I introduced this idea of the customer success track as a, a very practical tool to, to transform your business. And, and I know um, we're going to get to the transform word uh, because I know it's an important one for you. But I think that that's, that's one of the ways that you start looking at this is, you know, where are our customers today? Where do they want to go? You know, instead of I agree to this transaction, it's could I present you with a transformation? Um, and that, you know, that starts, hopefully starts the wheels turning about what that would take. What can we do in the online space? Because the people watching this video are building online businesses. So yeah. what can we do in that like pure online space to help people to see their purchases more like an investment? Sure. Well, a, a, a lot of it, I spend a lot of time talking about the customer journey. Um, and so a lot of that is done before the sale. Um, and, and, you know, I have something that I've probably 15 years been working on a framework I call the marketing hourglass. And it really, um, what it suggests is that there are seven behaviors. It's, it's similar to what, how people think about the marketing funnel. Um, but my, you know, hourglass goes, you know, well after the sale. Um, and uh, I identify seven behaviors, no like trust, try, buy, repeat, and refer. And I think our job as marketers is to understand the questions and, and objections that or objectives that people have at each of those stages um, and and to you know build our business around guiding people through those stages. So you know a lot of times when somebody just sees a a, a purchase as a transaction, it's because we haven't really taught them, you know, the value of it prior to that. We haven't really taught them why they should expect to pay a premium to work with us. We haven't really taught them um, the, the the stories and the case studies of, of other people that we've worked with that have gotten that transformation as well. And, that, and I think that that's, um, that's how you start that idea of, you know, of membership is that is really, you know, we, you know, one of one of the other steps in this book is I talk about you know narrowing our focus to the top twenty percent of our customers, which is really challenging concept for a lot of people. Uh, but it really comes down to if we're doing that education part, uh, if we are focused on you know who we can make successful, which is not everyone, <laughs> um, then you know then I think uh, uh, you can really wrap your head around that idea and then start saying okay of that of those ideal best customers. 
what else do they need? What's next for them? Um, and so that that's really, I think, how this online you know business that you're talking about is to think in terms of you know what's the next stage, what's the next promise we can make, you know, once we deliver on the promise uh, that that they originally came to us for. I, so how do you how do you combine this concept of narrowing your focus, mm-hmm. but then at the same time, what I'm hearing you say is you're you're kind of offering a pretty broad range of solutions. So is it you narrow your focus and then or offer a broad range of solutions for that narrowed focused group of customers? Yeah. Yes, I would take the word broad out of it. Is I think that the approach is very focused. It's just focused on a path. Um, and, and so it's not just, hey, we have this and we have this. It's we are going to take you from this stage to this stage, then to this stage. So it, it definitely has a path and a plan. Uh, but but the idea of narrowing is, and this has just come over years of working with hundreds of small businesses, is that as cliche as it is, you know, about 20% of most of their customers account for 80% of their business or profits. Um, and so what happens is we we underestimate, we greatly underestimate, frankly, the cost of just chasing everybody and anybody and not focusing on our most profitable customers who, by the way, are having a great experience and are referring us <laughs> as well. So if we understand who they are, two things happen. Um, we go out and find more of them um, as opposed to, hey, we sell marketing, who needs it, <laughs> right? Um, so we, we speak very specifically to their problems, needs, challenges, and results. But then we can also get very good at understanding how, what's the next thing we can deliver for them. What's the next value that they need? It, you know, everybody knows this. Nobody debates this. It is so much easier to sell more to people who already trust you <laughs> than it is to go out and find more people to earn their trust. Um, so, so it's really a combination of, of narrowing your focus so that you speak specifically to who you're trying to attract and attract more of them. But then that, that group is much easier easier for you to figure out what other products or services uh, or levels do we need to offer. Right. All right. So this is, we need to talk about the client success track at this point. We're dancing around it, but we need to get to it. So um, explain what this client success sure. track is, because I, this is another concept that I, I mean, I've been doing marketing as long as you have but I've never heard it called this. So explain the beauty of looking at it this way and how people can use this. What it essentially says is that almost all of our best customers come to us in a certain stage. They have similar characteristics. They have similar challenges, (laughs) uh, similar needs. And if we're going to, um, you know, do a service for them, um, we, we have to figure out, okay, how do we, you know, how do we accomplish um, you know, how do we overcome these challenges? And so what we actually ha- were able to create is an entire list of, of milestones. Um, and then, of course, associated tasks with each of those milestones that, that allow us to say, okay, if we accomplish all of these milestones, we will take them to the next stage. It's just it's just a given, <laughs> you know, because we've done it for a long time. And, and the beauty of milestones is they aren't, uh, does the website look good? <laughs> That's not a milestone. I mean, that, I'm not sure what that is, but it, but a milestone might be: uh, does the website load uh, properly on an iOS device, uh, for example? Yes or no. If the answer is yes, check that off. If the answer is no, fix that. Um, and so, what what we also know is that if we accomplish all those milestones, we know the promise of that for them, you know, moving forward. And so, we actually have five stages of every client we work with. And, and we, you know, it's almost, you know, nobody's purely in one stage or another, um, but it's, it's simply a, almost a math formula of checklist to, you know, kind of go through and, and assess their business where they are, but then give us a real focus on where we need to go to take them to the next stage. That My piece real... of it was so important to me when I read that, that the milestones are yes, no That's right. questions. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people, you know, have very vague ideas of, you know, did we deliver on what we said we were, <laughs> we were going to? This is not just a marketing idea. To me, this is a strategy idea. Um, this is a way for you to build your entire business. When when we developed this, all of a sudden it made uh, it made our, our changed our sales messaging. You know, it's instead of 
what do you need? We'll fix that. It's like, we'll fix that today, but here's where we're going. You want to go with us? <laughs> um, and, and it's changed, you know, how we train, it's changed how we hired. Uh, certainly it's, it's become our mission, you know, really to, so I, I really think that while this is a marketing book and this a concept is certainly um, rooted in marketing, I, I think it's an overall, you know, business strategy idea. So the client success track or the customer success track is this is the path they follow to the transformation. That's right. But it sounds to me like the transformation is happening at these milestone points as well, right? That's right. Yeah, I think as as I kind of gave the example of, you know, once we fix the foundation in stage one, right? And then we're actually now the promise is you're going to be able to consistently generate leads. Um, once we fixed, you know, the the milestones in uh, in uh, stage two, now you you know we effectively can promise that you are not only going to generate leads, you're going to generate business <laughs> because now we've worked on you know conversion. You know, so many people come come to marketers and they're like, hey, I need to run Facebook ads because you know I need more leads. Well, we're sending all those leads to a website that's you know, that's terrible. It's not going to convert. It doesn't matter how much money you spend. And so, you know, there is definitely an order to, you know, they, they may want more leads. Well, really what they want is more customers, but there really is an order to that. And we have to fix the order in, in somewhat of a linear fashion to deliver that promise. So it also does a great, is a great tool for us and for any business that uses this to differentiate. Um, I mean, when when people are going out to other people saying, yeah, we'll run Facebook ads for you. And we're actually showing them, we're actually showing them why Facebook ads won't work <laughs> um, and not trying to sell them that until it's appropriate place. And we're able to show them the order of that place. It's a huge differentiator over the people that are just trying to sell tactics today. What I love about this is you, you really are looking carefully at what is going to ensure that they were successful in the next stage by making sure all the ducks are in the row in the previous right. stage. Yep. So that ends up being good for your customer and for you because they're getting better results, right? Yeah. Well, and I, I think right now, and, and I've, I've been saying this for years, but you know, like a lot of things, the last couple of years have accelerated <laughs> some things, um, is that you know, we as business consultants, certainly as marketers, you know, have to be selling strategy. Uh, first off, because it's the most effective way to work with somebody. But also, if you're out there selling tactics, I mean, it's a race to the bottom. I, I bet you it'd take us about five minutes to get somebody to, who would promise to do us a WordPress website for $150. Right. And so this whole tactic obsession, you know, has to go away first off, because it's not serving the customers and it's also going to be a tough way for you to run a business, but, but bringing a strategic framework that, that not only differentiates you, but is going to actually deliver tremendous value is really how you're going to stand out today. I want to ask you about one more thing, because the people in my programs and the people I work with are people, you know, in our age group. Um, who have lived full lives. Well, you're you're much have, younger than me though, Pam. Oh, so. that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> um, people who've lived full lives and they've developed a set of values, yeah. and personal values and business values that are important to them. And one story I read in the book, and I don't know if you're willing to talk about this, but- Hey, it's in the what, book. I'll talk about okay. it. <laughs> okay, great. Was about- um, this moment when you recognize that you had to choose your customers based on shared values. And it was this very like high drama moment. So yep. Yep. can you tell that story? Sure. So like a lot of people, I, you know, when I jumped into my business, I had no plan, you know, no, I knew I could hustle work. You know, I got big projects, little projects, big companies, little companies. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, when, when you're, you're chasing business, you're trying to grow something, you know, it's pretty easy to get kind of drawn and attracted to somebody who says, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll do business with you. Um, and so uh, to not belabor the point too much, you know, I had a client that actually went to jail um, and I, you know, I got the invitation to testify before a grand jury because it was um, some federal racketeering charges that uh, uh, he was being charged in. And I mean, I had fortunately, um, you no, know, nothing interesting to tell them. Uh, but you know, they just rounded up everybody that uh, that showed up on this person's books. But you know, I wasn't doing anything illegal, but I was pretty sure they were. Um, and you know, so that was a moment I kind of said, you know, was I complicit in that? You know, and and you know, did I just did I have a narrow miss there that taught me? You know, taught me a lesson. And you know, that really was. Um, 
a very, as you talked about, a very, very much a turning point for me to say, you know, that's not who I am. That's not where I want to be. <laughs> and that's it. I'm in charge of that. And, and I have to, you know, really make sure that, that people understand who I am um, because the people who understand who I am, you know, enough of them will be attracted to that. And, and that's what we have to focus on. Absolutely. Well, and I, you know, I think we have to give ourselves a little bit of grace because in the early years of a business, you are, you're just kind of saying yes to everyone because you're trying to get it going. Right. So, and that's, but this is the kind of thing that the years teach you, right? right. You gain that wisdom and you um, are, and gain the courage to kind of stand up for your values. So uh, I love that you, you learn that lesson and you're turning around and teaching it. And that's one of the things I like best about your work, John, is that you you clearly have these decades of experience and you're a very deep thinker, deep but like high level thinker as well. But you have this ability to turn things around and explain them to us in a way that everyone can understand. So I really appreciate that about your work. The other thing I should say is I cannot tell you how many people I have sent to the referral engine book, which was, <laughs> I don't know how many books ago that was, but uh, what an awesome, what an awesome book. And what I love about this is now you're kind of pulling it all together and showing how it all relates. So I don't know if you planned this six books ago, but it seems like you did. <laughs> um, well, the, the, Simple answer is no, not at all. Um, I didn't plan it. Um, I, you know, probably when people say you have a great, you know, knack of of explaining stuff. Really, um, one of the things that I have um, as a, a great advantage that a lot of authors maybe don't is that I do this stuff every day, um, and so a lot of what I write about is just stuff that I do, <laughs> and it's like, hey, this worked for me. It might work for you too. Is is really how I, you know, I don't get too. Uh, excited about you know some you know new concept. It's really just uh, hey this this seemed to make sense and seemed to work. So um, the, this book in a lot of ways is it was me. Um, you know, and I, I signed the contract for this March 15, 2020. Um, and people can think a little bit about what was going on there. I really was like, what am I going to write about? <laughs> you know, I don't want this to book be a book about COVID. Nobody wants to read that. Um, but uh, what it really did is is I saw a lot of what happened to my customers. I saw a lot of how I treated and and reacted to my customers and consultants in my network, how they uh, saw you know their role to with their customers. And it was all very strategic. Um, and so you know the, and that's what people were hungry for. You know it wasn't like what's some new tactic we should do? It's how can we get closer to our customers, which is very much a strategic question. Um, and so you know that that very much informed you know this idea of the customer success track of customers as members as you know that's this idea of getting closer to your customers so you know i tell people this is a strategy book pure and simple with a uh, a workshop kind of wrapped inside of it because i i do you know i do give what i feel are pretty practical steps and action steps and uh there's a companion um website that has all the, you know, these are tools that we use in our consulting. And so I give you all the tools that we use to do a lot of the things and get to the, uh, uh, the results of, of a lot of the things that we ask for. So it, uh, it is kind of a combination of my work. Um, yeah. But, and but that, it, that marketing hourglass workshop that you have kind of embedded yeah. in the middle of the book. I would, I mean, it really reads like a workshop and you can go through and do the exercises and have the end result at the end. I thought that was extremely generous. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's the only way I know. <laughs> well, it's great. It's super useful. So if people want to find you, what is the absolute best place that they can find you online? Well, so there is a separate site for the, the the book at the moment, and it's just the ultimate marketing engine.com as, as the title. Um, however, if you want to just check out any of the things I've been working on uh, for the last uh, few decades, uh, you can find those at duct tape marketing.com and that's D-U-C-T-T-A-P-E marketing.com. Thank you so much, John Jantz. And if you are looking for comprehensive help, from someone who really knows his stuff and you want to make a big difference in the world, I highly recommend this book. It is a fantastic read and really useful. Your bonus uh, materials are really generous as well. Like you said, it's it's everything. Yeah, yeah. It's broken down by chapter. You'll 
there's a link in the book when you get it uh, that'll kind of take you to that site. And uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying the fact that uh, many people are doing it, uh, going and getting the tools and, and using them. And so that's, uh, that's the real goal here. That's amazing. Thank you so much, John. Oh, you bet, Pamela. It's always great to catch up with you.